Hi folks, out of come Japan again with, with another content which is also related to the cars. Um, recently we had a question and we wanted to bring you uh, something new related to car rentals and the car sharing. Now, coming to the point, uh, car rentals and the car sharing, we had a question of why would Japanese people not choose to possess or own a car in Japan? Car prices are incredibly cheap here. Then the reasons which are popping up in my mind are super convenient public transportation in Japan. Buses, trains and the bullet trains, they work tic-tac with minute to minute, second to second. Second reason, a monthly pay for your parking space next to your neighborhood will cost you darn money. 300 to 400 dollars on average in the metropolitan areas. Three, you have to maintain having the car. Every two years you need to go for an inspection check which we call a shaken in Japan. That is again time consuming and it costs you something. And maybe number four reason is when you go out for a dinner, for the shopping, for some leisure activities, you still have to park your car somewhere. Coin parks, oh, some ticket parks, which also costs money for you every time when you go out. For details, you can check the video here. Just click the button up there. You can watch in details. Now let's discuss and compare the car rental service against the car sharing service in Japan. First of all, we have uh, the car rental shops from the automakers, Toyota, Nissan, Honda, Suzuki, and so other brands as well. Obviously, these makers, they provide their own brands, and there are well-known shops such as the Nippon Rent-A-Car, Oryx, and some other companies. And they do also provide a wide range of an everyday used cars. Now, let me put in the merits and the demerits of those shops. Cars are new, reliable, well-maintained, clean cars, and peace of mind whenever you use the car. Quite good English support and the website as well. Cash payment is all right. Then when it comes to the demerits, obviously these companies, they charge us with a high rate. Operating hours usually from eight in the morning till eight in the evening. Car rental companies are operating at the gas station. Then think about your country if you have this kind of service. If not, it might be a good idea for you to start such business. First of all, you take your cars, allocate them in every single gas station. You don't have to pay the rent for the car parking. Then the stuff over there in each gas station can be facilitated and utilized. So when it comes to the pros and cons, Let's, let me tell you, the reasonable rates are quite competitive in the market. So, no worry about the refilling fuel. Anyways, you're going to bring it into the gas station. When it comes to the demerit, poor condition of cars, dirty cars, and operating hours. All right, we'll discuss two types of a car sharing system in Japan. The first one is the self-service car sharing. And the second one is an individual car sharing system in Japan. Self-service car stations are companies such as Times Car Share, Carico, Earth Car, and they have plenty of thousands of cars at their parking lots, which is making it very, very convenient and easy to access for the customers. They are well known for being a budget car for the short rides, such as going for the wholesale shops, or dropping someone at a station in a rainy day. Now I would like to demonstrate to you how it actually works. We found a Times Car Share stations, which is quite close to our company, and you'll see how it works. Registration. You should have a Japanese driving license and a credit card 
specify the date and time, search and find desired car at preferred destination, and do the reservation. You can unlock the car with a member's card, locate the car key, and start driving. On your return, make sure you're going to bring the car back to original station. You can refill gasoline by using the company's prepared car. Refilling gives you the bonus points for the future usage. Place the key back in and lock the car with your card. Payment is from your credit card at the end of the month. Now as you can see, I was able to get this unit in 15 minutes and it's only 100 meters away from my office. It's a 2018 model Suzuki Solio. I took this car for dropping my friend at the Yokohama station who is going to the airport. So it's quite convenient. Now talking about the pros about this service, it's flexible with the time and locations. Coming to the second point uh, is that it's absolutely contactless. You just need a card, the membership card. Now the third very good reason is about the good rates. I just need this unit for a 30 minutes drive to drop my friend and come back and park it. So 30 minutes would cost me 400 and 40 yen. I should also mention about demerits or the cons of having this service. You should use the application of a times car sharing which is completely in Japanese. That is coming for the poor English website and um, the support service. Now as a second thing is the monthly subscription fee. Now the third reason would be that the international driving license would never pass for this service. So folks, when it comes for a car sharing in Japan, uh, there is an awesome application. It's called Anyka, A-N-Y-C-A. What is this application about? These are the individuals who possess a car. They upload the pictures and they just rent their cars for some other individuals. And this application is such, such a good application for one like myself who is considering to buy Hachiroku like this. Then. What I do is, before I go and commit myself to purchase a car, I would like to go for a test driving. Yes, obviously I can go for a Toyota shop and do the test driving, but it's just a short time of uh, the, the, the car test driving. I got this car and I'm giving a test drive and to see and I prove it to myself, is it worth of going into this car or not? Another very handy um, the usage of it is when you go for a, the barbecues, you have a bunch of people with yourself, then Obviously, you need to bring them all in a 7-8 seater um, minivans like the Toyota Alfa, Velfire, Honda Stepwagen, or the Nissan Serena, and some other family type of minivans. So, this individual car sharing system or the service, how it works. First of all, I need to download the application and make the registration. Then I go for the search cars by location type and date and price in my case it was toyota hachiroko 86 i took the date of today and i was quite picky with the prices and i picked up the cheapest one i had to contact the owner before reserving confirm the car details and the meeting point and reserve i met in person the owner I checked the car condition for any damages scratches dents uh, beside the car with the owner and I exchanged the driver license to activate and start the sharing on the app. Drive, return, full tank is must. Meet in person again, make the final check for any damages, finalize the renting and leave feedback for each other. Let me explain about the merits and the demerits of individual car sharing system in Japan. It obviously has a wide selection of cars, starting from luxurious units until the budget cars. So the decent rates and the, the flexibility in time and location. When it comes to the demerits, the car must be returned in a full tank and I have to clean the car condition before I hand out hand in. And a certain Japanese language skills are required because most of the cases, the owners of the cars are Japanese. An international license may not be eligible. Some cars have 
mileage limits. Now, folks, I took this car, Toyota Hachiroku, using the same application in the any car. It cost me $39, plus I paid another $20 for its insurance. I had no restriction on the limit on making the miles on it. In 24 hours, of course, I need to return it back to the owner. If I were to rent such a similar car from the Toyota or some other rental companies, that would cost me more than $100, $150 per 24 hours. Another great example of self-service car sharing. We have reserved the Subaru XV, a compact SUV for attending a sports event with friends from 6.45 p.m. until 9 o'clock in the morning next day. So the total duration is about 14 hours. Times Car Share has ongoing campaign called the Night Pack, which costs only $4.8 plus 1.6 for every single 10 kilometer you make and we have made almost 30 kilometers and returned the car a little later than the set time. The total cost was $12 which could have been only $9 if returned on time. This $12 includes the total rental fee, the basic insurance and the fuel consumption. A similar rental from a traditional shop would cost us around $100 plus insurance fee and plus, of course, gasoline. So folks, in conclusion, if you need a ride in Japan, there are so many things that you need to consider. First, you will consider the car rental companies. You need international driving license or Japanese driving license. They are very convenient. English support, some uh, road traffic support, but it's pricey. On the other hand, you will have the car sharing. Here, what it comes to is the wide range of vehicles that you can choose, but you need Japanese driving license. Second, you need little Japanese language skills. So overall, guys, it's all up to you what type of car you'd like to drive, at what price, how long, where do you wish to go. And I hope this video content was quite informative for yourself in order to make a proper decision and so that you guys enjoy your ride in Japan. Take care guys, cheers, have a safe drive.